Hey, welcome to this video. It is nearing the end of the year, so happy holidays to everyone. And if you recently stumbled across my channel this year, I'm really, really grateful that you've checked me out. So for this video, I wanted to go through some of my empties that I've been collecting for the past while. Most of them are from, uh, were used up this year, but if I'm being honest, I haven't really kept track. I just have this big box that I like toss some things into now and then. So maybe some are from 2019, who knows? I'm gonna try and whip through these pretty quickly because I have quite a bit to go through, but I, I honestly feel like these empties videos are really satisfying to watch. And given that these are products that I've used all the way up or like enough to the point where I've gotten sick of them and decided, eh, no more, I don't need any more of this. I do definitely have like pretty thorough thoughts on all of these. So if you do have any additional questions, feel free to ask below if you don't think I've uh, addressed them that much here. I think I'm mostly just going to be going over like any highlights of these products, any like ones that really stuck out to me and if I overall enjoyed them or not. I'm gonna start out with sunscreen because I use sunscreen. Uh, I use sunscreen every time I go outside pretty much. So this year I've dropped drastically, but I think around the beginning of this year I finished up a lot because I had bought in 2019, I went to Japan and picked up a bunch of sunscreen, so I had, I was working my way through a bunch. Um, I have the Nivea Sun Water Gel, which I most recently used up, and this one is really, really nice. It has like a very vanilla pudding-like texture. It dries down pretty matte on my skin, doesn't irritate me at all. It's a chemical sunscreen, so I think it has some alcohol in it, but that's never really been something that bothers me. It's really easy to apply a large amount of it, um, which is what you need with sunscreen, and still feel very comfortable on the skin. If I let it sit for like a minute or two, it'll sink into like almost nothingness, maybe with a tiny bit of a dewy dewy layer um, and makeup sits on top of it just fine. This one is SPF 35 PA++++. So this was really great just for like I'm going to the office and like I, I didn't have a car so I would walk to and from like my apartment to my metro, metro to my office. So yeah that was like great for that. Another empty I have is the Biore UV, UV Watery Essence. It's SPF 50 plus, PA plus, 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 plus. Texture wise, this is actually pretty similar to the Nivea one in that they're like this pudding like texture. This one's maybe a little bit thicker, if anything. Again, experience on your face, very, very similar, like really easy to spread, comfortable to apply a lot of, and then it kind of sinks away into a very thin film that you can't really feel throughout the day. This one just has a bit of a higher rating, so if I knew it was really sunny or if I was going to be out a little more, I would opt for this one. These are both great, really happy with these sunscreens. Another Japanese sunscreen is the Anessa Perfect UV Sunscreen Skincare Milk. It is SPF 50 PA++++. Yeah. Um, this one I got in a little bottle because these are actually like pretty expensive. It's like two or three times the price of um, this one. I think this was you can find for like easily less than ten dollars. So really great option This mini cost me almost ten dollars and this is only 20 milliliters. I I know a lot of people like this sunscreen, but I actually really didn't like it I found the the texture is like a it's like a liquidy lotion at first. It's an op opaque white liquid and it is quite thin but it had this like mattifying effect and it felt very powdery and silicone-y on my face as I spread it out. Really powdery is the best way I can describe it. Um, I think that it was really really smoothing and I can see how a lot of people might enjoy that but for me it was... I just didn't like the way it felt as it spread across my skin. The bottle is really expensive, so I wouldn't opt for it again. And it has a really, really strong perfume fragrance. Like, the whole thing kind of reminds me of baby powder almost. Not gonna repurchase. A another sunscreen is the Etude House Sun Prize Mild Watery Light 
sunscreen. This one is SPF 50 plus PA++++. Man. So this is a Korean sunscreen and this one is um, actually a mineral sunscreen. And I really, really like this sunscreen. It really just feels like a normal cream. Just like think of a really bland cream and that's kind of what this felt like to me. Not really gel-like, just like lotion cream. Yeah, it really did the job. I felt like it, it doesn't like quite dry down like these ones do. Definitely like doesn't leave any greasy feel. None of these leave any white casts or um, anything like that. So they were all pretty good. Just this one is really heavily fragranced and not worth the money in my opinion. All of the other three I'm very happy with. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna go over, I guess some actives I have lying around. This one is the Elizaveca CF Nest 97% Bijo Serum, which now looking at, I have no idea what it means and it's Korean on the back, but I'm pretty sure I bought this because it was a niacinamide serum from what I knew. I'm not sure what Nest 97 is, but this didn't really do anything that exciting for my skin. It was kind of nice and hydrating and I like the idea of having some niacinamide in my skincare. It didn't break me out or anything, um, but I wouldn't really repurchase because I don't really, I didn't notice any major effects from either starting or stopping it. So yeah. Um, I have a few ordinary products. This one is the salicylic acid. And as you can see, I still have some left because I think I don't really like the ordinary products. I have a few that I've also decluttered like their um, niacinamide. I think I ended up using like the lactic acid on my body instead. Maybe I'll make a whole video on The Ordinary later, but as far as this product goes, um, this was one of the ones that kind of I found would pill up easily on me or would um, kind of do this thing where it gets kind of like white and streaky if I layered it too fast with other ingredients and it was kind of just a pain to work with. I tried using it as just a spot treatment for where I was having a lot of breakouts and I really didn't notice a huge difference. Right now I'm using the Paula's Choice BHA toner instead and I'm not sure how well BHAs work with my skin but I'm enjoying that product and its formulation a lot more than this one. I have another ordinary product here. It's their azelaic acid. This one I actually end up using the entire bottle and this is one of my favorite ordinary products and I probably would still be using this except I try to di dial my products back by a lot when I started using Tret instead and my skin has changed a lot like since 2019 to now because at the beginning of 2019 I had zero acne and I tried a lot of different things um, throughout the times and uh, this texture is pretty nice. It's just like a thick cream and a lot of azelaic acids I think can be kind of gritty but this one is not at all. This one definitely helps to calm down my skin a bit and I enjoyed using it but um, the reason why I haven't gotten it again is just because I'm trying to like pare things down as little as I can. I guess azelaic acid didn't seem like a, a key step I needed. All right, moving on to, I don't know, just like some other miscellaneous skincare. Uh, I have the Muji Oil Cleanser and I really, really like this oil cleanser. It's one of my favorites. This is, I bought it in Japan, so it was like $5. So super cheap, love that. And it's a great size. It has a very, very subtle, sweet scent, which I think is quite pleasant. It takes my makeup off really quickly. It doesn't sting my eyes. The only problem that I had is I think it's just like a problem with this bottle, but the pump started leaking and I couldn't quite pump it out as nicely. So um, yeah, it's like really hard to get this last bit, but I think that's just like my bottle was slightly broken. But yeah, I tried some other, I'm, I was going through the process of trying some other oil cleansers instead, but I think I might go back to this one after I finish those up because I really enjoyed it. I was using the Muji Moisturizing Milk 
for a long, long time, maybe two years almost. This is my second bottle that I've gone through and it is just a really nice thin moisturizer. It is like a lotion in the Asian lotion sense where it is quite liquidy, not really a gel, but more like a viscous milk. Um, you can't really squeeze this bottle and there's just like one, it's like a toner shaped bottle. So I would have to shake it out. And because it was liquidy, it that's how it was able to come out. That was a strange description. But anyways, uh, it pats in and sinks into the skin really nicely. Like I really feel like my skin just slurps it right up. However, um, I did often find that I needed to layer a bunch of layers of this, which because the texture of this is so thin and sinks in easily, I am able to comfortably layer a bunch of um, layers of this product, but I would also enjoy if I could just slap on a moisturizer and then feel like I was moisturized enough at the end. So I've been trying other things and yeah, I don't know. In the summer, this is great. I think one layer of this is good for my in the summer oily skin. It does leave a very dewy, glassy skin texture. So keep that in mind. If you like put foundation on or just like lightly powder over that for the rest of your day, you'll be fine. Um, that'll go away. Uh, but yeah, just so you know. So the next product I have is the Hadalabo Gyokujin Hyaluronic Acid. And this bottle, um, I'm actually reusing this bottle and it's filled with uh, the premium version inside now. But I went through pr probably two or three bottles of the normal Hyaluronic Acid, the one that looks just like this. And I really, really enjoyed it. I wanted to try something a little thicker and more moisturizing for the winter. And um, I'm kind of slowly working it in because I'm nervous about it potentially breaking me out. I just need to like work things into my routine very, very slowly. I do enjoy both versions, but I don't know that I love the premium one any more than the original one. So I'd probably go back and just repurchase the original Hyaluronic acid version. This is a really, really great and affordable hyaluronic acid. I think this was one of like the f my introductions to hyaluronic acid and I think it's great. It really plumps up the skin. It's very soothing. It is easy to work with. It's affordable. No complaints. Oh, I have this empty bottle of Curology and mine was niacinamide 4%, clindamycin 1%, azelaic 8%. I just did the like free trial. It was okay. It didn't change my life like some other people I've seen, so I didn't continue using it. I also have the Mizon All in One Snail Repair Cream. This is a really nice uh, lightweight gel moisturizer with 92% snail mucin. Uh, now I'm using the Cosar X snail mucin essence and I really, really love that for like my hydrating snail steps. So this was okay. It just felt like a gel moisturizer. Didn't do anything crazy for my skin. It was a little soothing. It was a little moisturizing, but I don't really need to repurchase it. I really, really like my Cosar X snail mucin now. I have a little mini jar of the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream and this is a really okay cream. Drunk Elephant is pretty expensive and I don't think this was too much more impressive than anything that's like in my skincare price range, so not gonna repurchase it, but it is lovely if you're a big fan of Drunk Elephant. I don't have much to say about this. I just kind of used it up. It wasn't very impressive. I feel like this is like as good as CeraVe. Most Drunk Elephant products I've tried so far are like, okay, this is not bad, but so is, so is CeraVe. So that's me. This bottle is, this is the Hellpore cleanup mask, which I kind of bought as 
like a joke present thing. But anyways, it it's like a peel off pore peel mask and I've since learned that you're not really supposed to use like those like nose strips so I'm just gonna get rid of this. Uh, don't recommend it that much. It If you put it over your entire face it definitely hurts when you peel it off. I just was using it on my nose only and it was kind of like a cheaper alternative to nose strips but you're not really supposed to use those so no more. All right, finally moving on to the makeup category, which is a lot more satisfying because obviously you go through skincare pretty fast, but makeup definitely takes longer to work through. But to be honest, most of these are eyebrow products, so I hope you don't get too disappointed. Uh, speaking of, I guess I'll just kind of hold them all up for you here. Uh, I wear eyebrows pretty much every day. My eyebrows are quite light so I think this is one of the things that makes a really big difference on my skin. Uh, so yeah, if there's like one thing I would definitely use it's eyebrows. So this one here is the NYX eyebrow pencil crayon. It is like one of these oval shapes and it has a pretty nice formula. I like a kind of stiff chalky feeling formula. I did enjoy that aspect but it was really quite a pain that the other end of this is this weird little brush instead of an entire spoolie. It's kind of a pain. So for that reason I probably wouldn't repurchase it. I have a little mini of the... no I have one of these Etude House Slim Drawing Eyebrows and it's like one of those really really tiny pencil ones and I really like this but I went through this super fast because it's so dang thin. I do really like these really thin pencil uh, eyebrow pencils but again I have a hard time like justifying the price because I go through them so so fast. Like these other ones that are even just an oval shape but still like fairly thin they'll last me like easily a year of on and off use if I'm like interchanging between other eyebrow products but like these like definitely three months or less. So that's unfortunate but the Etude House like drawing eyebrow pencils are really really affordable maybe five dollars so I feel fine uh, because of that. Here is a Etude House Tint My Four Tip Brow and it's one of these kind of gimmicky brow uh, pens. This I definitely would not repurchase. It was a little hard for me to work with but I do have a hard time with brow pens in general because my um, brows are so sparse that brow pens can look really really dramatic and like really fake if I'm not careful. In the middle thickest part of my brows I could use the four prongs and draw them on and it would look like pretty nice but otherwise I kind of just had to use like one of the corners instead as just like one prong as my brow like if I was trying to do the very ends of my brows so it's a little bit finicky. It's pretty affordable so if you think that this might work for you it's worth a try at least the Etude House one is. Um, I think depending on your brow it might really work for you but for me not so much. So this one I picked up in Japan. I'm not even sure what the brand is but it's another brow pen type product. It's a felt, uh, excuse me, it's a brush pen on one side and then the other side is like powder. The powder is really underwhelming and the like tip of the powder is really thick and blunt so I felt like it was kind of hard to work with but I liked this pen because it was really really faint. I wasn't as precise as say the Glossier Brow Flick however the pigment of it is like somewhat translucent so it was really easy not to overdo it with and I could kind of slap it on and it would last me throughout the day really nicely and be something easy to work with in the morning. It wasn't as precise and I didn't have to be that careful with it but it was better at achieving those hair-like strokes than 
even like a thin brow pencil like this. So moving on, I have this Dr. Fixer mascara and it's this clear mascara with some fibers in it and it can help if you have really really stick straight lashes that don't hold curls this will basically add in that like waterproof effect that just it holds your uh, curl in place and then you can put pretty much any mascara on top that's kind of the reason that i bought it but i ended up feeling like putting on two different mascaras was kind of a pain and I didn't always love how other mascaras felt on top of this so I ended up just using this as a brow gel and I really really liked it for that it had like extra fibers too which would help really hold and like fluff up my brows and add a little oomph to it here's another brow pencil this is the benefit precisely my brow pencil another one of these really skinny ones I really really liked in using this it's just kind of expensive so i don't need i can like work through other brow products for now moving on to mascaras i've been through many many tubes of the heroin make long and curl advanced film mascara they also have like a lengthen and something they have like a few versions but i always get the advanced film one um I think because I read it might be slightly easier to take off than their other version. But overall, I really, really enjoy the Heroin Make mascaras. Again, I have super, super straight lashes and I need something that is intensely waterproof to hold the curl all day. And this did it. It really just... Um, held things right up in place it was really fluffy i thought it was like as natural looking as a intense waterproof mascara can get on me and it was able to add a lot of oomph to my short lashes so really really happy with this if you are someone who struggles from short straight lashes i would definitely give this a try it's also incredibly waterproof so it is going to last you the whole day really well and you're going to need a good oil cleanser to get these off yeah, that's how I know like when my oil cleansers are good is because I have like always the most intense mascaras. Yeah, good stuff. This next mascara is the Holly Pop Detail Cara from Holika Holika. And it is one of these really tiny mascaras and I enjoyed these for my lower lashes. Since my lower lashes are so teeny tiny, it helps having a separate small brush to get in there especially if the mascara I'm using for my top lashes is like it has a really big wand it helps to have a separate one for my bottom one but I found this formula pretty underwhelming it didn't really do anything it's not waterproof so if I use it on my top lashes it doesn't do anything it's really really natural looking uh, and I need a lot of help on my lower lashes. So it is um, nice for making your lashes black, lengthening just a little bit. But nowadays, I kind of try to just find something with a wand shape that is reasonable enough that I can work into my bottom lashes as well. Some base products I used up is... This is the Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer and i really really liked this as a primer it added a little bit of glow it had this like really fruity candy uh coconut smell which i was kind of put off by at first but it grew on me over time it, it is smoothing it's hydrating it adds glow it was just really pleasant i didn't find that it was like it made my makeup last longer or anything but it doesn't advertise that it did just feel nice under my makeup in general so I enjoyed using that up but I'm not huge on primers in general so I probably won't repurchase that this is the bourgeois healthy mix serum foundation and I use the shade 52 I really really like this foundation this is still one of my favorites especially at the drugstore um, which you can't find in the drugstores in America, but you can in like Canada. And I think I just bought this off Amazon or something. It has a pretty flowery scent, but I kind of like it. It's a little nostalgic to me. Um, it is just 
such a nice natural skin like finish it is hydrating it is like light to medium coverage it makes my skin look really luminous and healthy and um perfect for everyday wear i think i wore this a lot through college and i definitely want to grab another bottle of this soon so this is the hello fab bendy avocado concealer and i use the shade two the shade selection is really bizarre um, I tried repurchasing this in, I think there was a shade 2.5 now and it looked really orangey on my skin, whereas this one's a little peachy, which I kind of enjoyed for my under eyes, not as much for like the rest of my face, which I like my everyday concealer to be able to kind of multitask and do both. It is probably a light to medium coverage concealer, which I prefer on a day-to-day -day basis it sat pretty nicely under my eyes definitely didn't cover like everything at once but it made things look a lot better and it looked healthier because it has a little bit of luminosity to it and the shade selection is a little weird and it doesn't multitask as well as i would love from my go-to everyday concealer oh dang i left this downstairs still but I have an empty of the DHC lip balm, just their original one. Really, really like that lip balm. Wish I had more. I'm kind of working through some other ones, but it is kind of a firmer waxy formula and clear lip balm. And it is just really, really nourishing and plump, uh, plush on the lips. Uh, I really don't like when my lip balm is too slippy slidey around and that one had a good um, comfortable hold on my lips throughout the night and I felt like it wasn't disappearing anywhere if that makes sense. But moving on to some of the other ones I have in front of me, this is a tiny mini of the Lipstick Queen lipstick in Medieval and I guess I called it a lip balm because there's a tiny bit left. It's like this sheer red lip color and I used to be really into these kind of like sheer tinted balms and they were pretty easy. I mean I still am but I'm kind of into a different type. I don't really like red for this purpose anymore but um also I don't know how I use this up because I didn't really like the Lips the Queen texture that much. It also has like oh yeah a really crayony scent which I I've had this for a long time so maybe it's gone off and I shouldn't have used it but not really that into Lipstick Queen overall anymore. It's just a, like a tinted lip balm that I used up. On the flip side I have this sugar lip balm. I'm not sure in what color. Maybe R01. I don't know if that's the color. But I actually I haven't used this all the way up. I remember the first sugar lip balm I tried ever was in there just like no color formula and I thought it was great. I thought it was so buttery and hydrating and like plush on my lips and it was also one of the first like more expensive lip balms I tried so I was really really impressed by it but then in this tinted color version I just felt like it was a little too slip slidey all around and I just didn't find myself reaching for it very much at all. It is like a really pretty sheer color but I think also, this like tube is really big for my lips. I don't know. I, I can't really put my finger on it because it is a nice product, but I just really didn't enjoy using it. So um, I, I did use up like most of it, but I'm kind of just over it now. It's also really old. So moving on from that. This here is the Maybelline Color Jolt Intense Lip Paint in Berry Naughty. I don't even know if they make these anymore. This... I hate this applicator. It's one of those ones. It's like this like fuzzy tube with a hole in the middle where the like liquid color comes out of. It smells like strawberries, which is kind of cool. Uh, I actually really like this scent of it. I felt really fun when I put it on. I don't like this like form of lipstick at all, but I really, really liked this berry color in particular. Let me see if there's any left. So that's why I went through it. Now it's like, oh dude, uh, now it's like this hard rock in there. So yeah, this is a relic. But I thought this color was really, really flattering on me for a long time. I mean, I still, I still like it, yeah. 
or I'm calling you stop. It's like empty until here pretty much. And like the part that's here is really firm, like not its original texture at all. And then finally, I have some eyeliners. I really like liquid eyeliner, especially black liquid eyeliner. I don't know why I buy so much eyeshadow when really like my favorite look is just black liner, but it is what it is. So first, this one is a pencil liner, the Etude House Styling Eyeliner in brown. Really underwhelming. Took me a lot of years to get through this. I think it's like a good value because it lasted me so long, but the product itself is kind of uh, not that smooth, so it's not great if you want to draw like a nice line. You can kind of only use it to kind of smudge out. Not that great quality. This one is the McQueen liquid liner, and it is a felt, uh, a, excuse me, a brush tip black liner. I think the first like 10, 15 uses, it was pretty good. Not as precise as say like my Stila liquid eyeliner, if we're gonna use that as like a, a, sh a strong like baseline good liquid eyeliner. This one was a little harder to work with, but it was only $5. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm willing to work with it. Lasting power, not as good. It could like get a little crumbly by the end of a really long day, but if my day wasn't too strenuous, it lasted just fine. But really like it started to become more of a gray, gray black very, very quickly. And then the texture like was not as liquidy. So it would kind of pill on itself while I was trying to apply it, which is just not going to work for like a sharp liquid wing. So pretty disappointed, not going to repurchase. I have a heroin make smooth liquid eyeliner in brown. And this is really awful. Actually, I don't know if you can really tell, but this is what was like one pretty smooth motion, but you can see how it's kind of like weirdly patchy and choppy and this is just on my hand it's even harder to work with on my lash line i don't know what it is about this formula but it is just kind of like chunky and not smooth and it is really really hard to work with every time i use this i was like i just want like a nice like tiny subtle brown wing and it was kind of it would kind of turn into a mess uh, however, I have the same exact mess, uh, excuse me, I've been talking for a while now. I have the exact same liquid eyeliner, but in black, and that one is great. Let me tell you, that one, super precise, super smooth, easy to work with. I would, like, rank it slightly higher than the Stila Stale Day Mascara, or whatever the name is. But the one in brown is just so awful. I don't know why. It's a mystery. This one, it says La Rose de Versailles, but the packaging is all in Japanese. I'm not exactly sure which brand it is, but I definitely picked it up in like a Don Quixote in Japan. I really, really liked this one. It was really good. It was super precise, super black, super easy to work with. Um, lasted like a good half a year at least. I haven't ever seen this brand while I'm shopping on YesStyle or other Asian websites, so it's probably easier just to buy like a Western brand eyeliner, but I really liked it and it was probably like $10. And then this eyeliner is the Clinique Pretty Easy Liquid Eyelining Pen. This is great. This is a great um, liquid eyeliner. It's like super black actually, more black than most eyeliners that I've used. Maybe not the most precise, but for whatever reason, like really, really easy and smooth to work with. I don't think it lasted me that long. I want to say like half a year at most, but I was really, really happy with how my eyeliner turned out pretty much every time I used it. So yeah, I might actually repurchase this again. All right, so that wraps up my empty skincare and makeup for 2020 and uh, that was kind of a lot to go through for sure and I don't even think I like covered everything necessarily because some things I just throw away and forget to put in my empties box. 
but in any case i feel like it's really satisfying to go through skincare and makeup because sometimes i'll get on a train where i just like buy too much and then um but when i see myself using things up it's like okay yeah good this is how it's supposed to work um again i kind of just gave my gut reactions on most of these these were like this is all pretty much one take so if there's anything you want to know more about i can definitely think and mull it over and give you a more detailed response so please go ahead and ask away so yeah i hope this was satisfying to watch maybe helpful in some way and i thank you so much for watching and depending on when i get this up enjoy your holidays <laughs>